think is, MuppetGuysTalking.com is the only place you can get it. You can't get a DVD. Streaming online. Right. What is MuppetGuysTalking.com? Yeah. It's, it's a place, the only site you can actually get the what? documentary, Muppet Guys Talking. You can't get it on a DVD. When is that coming out? Uh, oh, March 16th. 16th. What? Yes. Yeah. I can't wait. That's <laughs> it. Okay, done. Okay, no. Next. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> I guess for me, one of the, it wasn't intense, but it was I mean, that I was underwater for a week for uh, with, with Miss Piggy for the second Muppet movie that Jim directed. And so she did an underwater ballet, and I was underwater for about a week. Mm. With a scuba well, guy. Scuba and, weights on the shoes. Do, do you have some sort of apparatus on your face? Or? No, the scuba. No, the scuba guy had a uh, air uh, uh, tube here. I, I would be breathing. I would be listening to the music underwater. I have a monitor underneath the water there also. And then as soon as I heard the first AD uh, say, "Okay, ready," I take a deep breath and I throw the tube away. And then I do the action for a while, and then I hear cut, and this scuba guy comes back with a with a spread. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was uh, that went on for about a week. That was kind of funny. So we were doing uh, a series called Muppets Tonight, and one of my all-time idols, Tony Bennett, was a guest, and I have this character named Johnny Fiamma, and part of the story was that Johnny had everything Tony Bennett. It was Johnny's idol as well. He had Riga Tony Bennett in a can. Uh, he had, uh, there was, I don't know, they had some great funny things that, that Johnny collected. But his ultimate thing was an animatronic Tony, which was this, you know, kind of like this, the fortune teller uh, booths. And we put Tony in, <laughs> in the box <laughs> and the real when, Tony? yeah the real Tony Bennett he's in he's in the case and when you press a button uh, he Tony came alive and he would sing I left my heart in San Francisco and so he sings a piece of it and then stops and then Johnny has a line and the scene continues and it was the first thing we shot with him and uh, so they put Tony in the booth and he's waiting in there and, and I'm thinking oh my god it's Tony Bennett and uh, and I'd spoken to him a little bit before and so we start shooting, and I'm ready. I've got Johnny up, and Johnny presses the button, and Tony starts singing, and I just started to weep. Oh wow! From him singing, oh, and wow. and and nothing could come out of Johnny's mouth. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I looked around at everybody. And I'm just crying, and uh, and then we cut, and Tony came out. And he was like, "Are we still rolling?" Because <laughs> he didn't know what was happening. You know, he was he wasn't sure what was going on. But that was a pretty you know, mm. awesome moment for me to, I don't know, it was just an emotional connection. As soon as he started singing, I just couldn't, I couldn't function. <laughs> my, in my case, I, mm. I had told our head writer for Fraggle Rock, Jerry Jewell, that I didn't like roller coasters. I never wanted a roller coaster, just in case something happened, right? <laughs> and so what did he do? He wrote a, a story, you know, an, an episode where my character went on a roller coaster. This character called Traveling Matt. So I had to ride the roller coaster 13 times that day to get all the different camera oh angles. Gosh. And we rigged it so that I was sitting in a seat next to my character, Matt, and working him this way, but I had a coat with a sleeve disguise, and there was a fake arm like this. The hard part of it was that he had to look terrified while I was having fun, which is not what we do. Right? <laughs> Normally, if he looks terrified, I'm going... <laughs> and. Uh, that was the hard part about that one, but you know, at the end of that, I loved roller coasters, and I jump at the chance to get on a roller coaster now. Wow! I love them. Take your life. The crazier, the better. Wow! Well, I, one of my worst days um, on Sesame Street, uh, I don't think I talk about this enough. I know, is um, I did a character called the Countess, who was the love interest for Jerry Nelson's Count, and normally the shop is a very um, understanding about, you know, you don't want to make the puppet too heavy, but this particular day they, they bathed the uh, Countess in very he heavy velvet uh, clothing, you know, dresses, layers and layers, and she has this wig on which is heavy, and um, just putting her on, I went, ooh, wow, you know, it's not going to be tough. And uh, we pre-record a lot of these things, and this was a parody of, oh yes, I remember it well from Gigi, um, except we caught it, uh, let's see, was that, uh, 
well, I can't remember now, but anyway. So we had to do the scene and do the dialogue, and then we had to keep going. And the, the weight of the puppet is, it, it's more on the back of your hand than up in this part of your arm. So to do that and to make this happen, opening and closing the mouth, which is this, the Muppet style of talking, uh, just was killing me, just absolutely killing me. And it got harder and harder and harder. But as Frank probably said earlier, you just you just put it over there and just continue doing it. To the but it got to a point where I literally could I just couldn't my hand froze I couldn't open it I couldn't close it it was just dead. So uh, uh, one of the other performers had to take a take it over and finish it for me. It was a little humiliating, you know. I know I've happened. done that with Jim. I've taken over Jim. Jim's taken over me when. When you just your hands can't your hand move anymore, they can't move anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was the only time that I really remember that happening. But I was disappointed in myself because usually I can. Well, just, we were too friendly. <laughs> I just say to myself, "You have to do this." Fans I usually can do that, but I could not do it that day. We all worked around explosions all the time because there would be some sort of magical transformation, or we'd be shooting an at the dance scene and somebody's head would blow off, and the way that was accomplished was, if your character was, was oh, stay in your shot, if your character was here, and we were all down below, um, they would set up right below that character on the screen, they would set up an explosive. So it would blow up. And the explosive guys always said, this won't be bad, it'll just make a lot of smoke. <laughs> and then it would just blow your eyebrows off, you know? and. Um, so we were always a little worried about what, how, what was the explosion going to be like. But we did many, many of them. We basically set off an explosion and then reset without the head on and do another explosion and then it could just dissolve through at that, between the two uh, shots. Anyway, that, that's how, I mean, I wasn't really subjected to any danger that I can think of with Gonzo ever. I think the most, like myself, is probably a character I do named Bobo, the bear. Um, I think just because he's uh, a pretty laid-back, easy-going kind of guy, um, I think he's amazed that no one's put him in a zoo, that he's allowed to <laughs> walk around in the real world, <laughs> you know, that nobody's noticed that he should be somewhere caged, probably. <laughs> so he's pretty grateful, you know. Uh, so I think that's probably the most like myself, yeah. How about you, Fred? Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, the two really principal characters I've done, along with many, anything Muppets as we call them, uh, was Prairie Dawn, who was a little girl, not a monster, and then Zoe, who uh, was a three-year-old monster. And it's, they're like my children, if you know what I mean? So it's a bit of a Sophie's choice to say, which do I... Uh, more. Touchy, yeah, touchy. Because <laughs> when she goes home, <clears throat> there'll be trouble. <laughs> I'm a good one. No, I'm a good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I get I, that. I, but I, lo I love Zoe because she's really innocent. She's three, mm. right? You know, as best as I can be three. And I like the way she sees the world. She's very curious and very accepting. And um, I, I live, she's, I, I, it brings me a lot of joy to do her. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess of, of, of all of them I prefer. No, I can't say prefer. I just, I miss, I miss, because I am now retired, I miss bringing those characters up and bleh, out of me, you know, because they feel good. Sometimes when I'm in the car, I'll go into a Zoe thing and just sort of <laughs> scream or yell. I do, I do Whoa. indeed, yeah. <laughs> And it feels so good. It's um, it's like being able to get on the top of the building and just yell. Oh, hmm. It's very freeing, sort of like the front of the Titanic. Follow me, people. Follow me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think given what you said, that Prairie Dawn will be upset. <laughs> I won't tell her. Yeah. How about you? Hard to answer because they all live with me in the house, and they're all, we're all together there. And there's a lot of jealousy and <laughs> fighting between them. They're, they get so mad at each other. You know, Zoot will just take Bunsen socks, and Bunsen gets upset. And Gonzo comes in and tries to stop it. And then the next thing you know, Chip is asking where his computer is. So it's chaotic. I can't really. You should mention that Soren. His house is 
Have you heard of Bellevue? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? It's they're all aspects of our personalities, mm. and so it's a, it is a hard question to answer. Mm. But to get it out of the way, Gonzo is easy for me to ad lib with for mm. some reason. Yeah. And the others are a little bit more of a construct, so they're not as spontaneous. It's hard to be spontaneous with them, but. I love them all, you know, if I do a couple of characters for a while and then I travel to another country and do a couple of other characters from a different family of characters, it's so refreshing. You know, it's like, kind of like related to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Fred? Well, I love Gonzo and Bunsen and I that's what I love doing most of all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have mentioned, because Cookie Monster, <laughs> most like me, that came out at a very early time in my career. Now, I guess a combination of Grover and uh, Fozzie Bear, there's, there's parts of me that are significant in both of those. They're the only parts of you that you can stand, I think. Probably, right? Would you say that? Now, see, that to other people would sound vicious. But to me, it's vicious. <laughs> well, it was meant with, it was meant with viciousness. <laughs> I, felt, I felt the viciousness. <laughs>